Well, hello, everybody, party people, friends, family, uh, the dead. Everyone came out today to the funeral for what film are we doing a eulogy for today? American uh, History I, X? Yeah. Rest in peace. I American History X died last night uh, <laughs> of, of an overdose of um, fentanyl. It was very tragic. Um, I'm opening a beer. It's not a big deal. Nobody freak out. I, I, it uh, is it is 7 p.m., but I am opening my second beer of the day. Let's go. Podcast time. Podcast time. I, I'm i bummed out, man. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> I watched American History X. American History Sex, more like. Ameri- I, <laughs> American History Excrements? Hey! I... <sighs> I, I don't know. I don't I don't <laughs> No jokes? I, I, okay, no jokes. We'll, no. we'll cut the jokes out. No more jokes. I, that's fair. Everybody no more jokes. in the comments, stop joking around. S- stop being funny. Oh, no before we humor. get any further, I wanna say, uh we fucked up on uh uh Call Me By Your Name takes place in Italy. Uh where yeah, so like we, I we fucking know. said. I, like I fucking but, no, said. No, like you said I it takes place in said. Barcelona in Italy, and I hooked on to Barcelona and said Spain. Did I say Barcelona? I'm a fucking... Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, who the fuck cares? It's in Italy. Italy. Listen, I've never been uh, outside of my house, so I don't actually know where anything is. Listen, European uh, geography is for cowards. It's Uh, true. It's true. I don't understand it, and I'm... Oh, hey, real quick before we start, though... I am currently blowing the fuck up in Helsinki, Finland, and I have no idea why. Shout out to the Finns! Obviously the best Nordic country. Uh, uh, May they establish their dominance over the Swedes. Uh, Yes. Uh, I I don't know where else to go with that bit. Um, But I do know that I'm Neo... And you're May. And I this am is your Dick's excrement. Um and we'd like to thank our sponsors, uh, Machine Age Productions. Uh as of right now, the uh Nick's Horror Film Collective should be out on Shudder. Uh Machine Age Productions has a short film nine on there. Go check it out. Okay, okay, Go whoa, watch whoa, whoa. it. Clarification. They have a short film on there, not uh, and it's called nine, not nine short films. They they've only yes, done, and you didn't you didn't imply that, but I didn't want anybody to think, oh my god, did they really make nine whole fucking movies? And the answer is no. They only made the one. I I think at 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 that point, if you make nine short films, it's just a movie. <laughs> yeah, honestly, that's that's like a bunch of reels. It's just yeah. VHS whatever you know <laughs> vhs 99 which is coming out yeah. in like a week also on shutter anyway, oh is it it's, yeah it's fine Ooh. we're not sponsored by them but it is cool uh hey shutter sponsor me you cowards honestly shutter should be sponsoring this podcast i don't know why they aren't i feel like they're losing out by not sponsoring Someone us give me the email of of the shutter sponsorship people well uh, anyway well no, okay uh, well, well, well well if until until shutter sponsors us we have to defame them so uh i personally don't use that streaming service at all ever and hate it completely unless they give me money in which case i what i i I just heard that they only have gross shitty horror stuff on there my favorite i mean my least favorite (laughs) wait (laughs) how how do you slander them i don't know Uh, i I don't know how to slander them uh anyway (laughs) okay we'd also like to thank ambi dream studio it's an etsy store uh go check them out uh, links for all these are going to be in the description, and uh, we're going to talk about the movie with possibly the highest slur per minute ratio. Yeah, definitely the highest slur per ratio movie I have ever seen. Um, uh, yeah, there's a bunch, and they they even play them off as jokes. It's kind of weird, guys. They they even like. I'm pretty. I don't. I, I like. I. I know a lot about about alt right Nazi shit because uh, it's I like knowing the enemy and and in what the enemy says and they dug up some slurs I've never heard. Yeah, <laughs> so, they they come up with some fresh, they, spicy ones. They they dig pretty deep in this film. Mm-hmm. Um, so on yeah, I uh, okay okay whoa whoa whoa. 
before we get too deep into this, I, I want to mention a little production tidbit. Um, and this is important, it, or I would not stop the podcast and do it. Okay, so the film is directed by Tony Kay. Uh, now, there is a lot of, um, we're going to call it debate, as to how much of this film is Tony Kay's doing and how much of it is, uh, who is, who is, uh, uh, Edward Norton. That's right. From fight club. Uh, What is he doing in all of these movies? Anyway, um, see, here's the deal. Tony Kay supposedly kind of made a somewhat shitty movie. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) and, so he had like a lot of disagreements with everybody about the way that everything was going. Um, and so he, he got to this place where Edward Norton <laughs> had better ideas for how to edit and shoot the movie, uh, and even direct actors, uh, than Tony K did. So Tony K uh, lost his version of the movie pretty much in favor of Edward Norton's much better Chad edit of the movie. <laughs> well, and, uh, I, and which was longer than he intended. So because of this, he, uh, Tony K disowned the movie and claims that he did not direct it, even though he did direct it. Um, Edward Norton just fixed it. Well, I, I, I've read the Tony K edits and we'll talk about them after we talk about, the actual movie they're but spicy if if those edits are in there it makes the movie nazi propaganda which okay is, so, is not ideal so that's what we need to talk about like right out of the gate so um we're gonna tell you what what happens directly in the plot of this movie if you haven't actually seen it but um until we do that it's worth mentioning that this is a film about neo-nazis uh, and and basically they're they're like shitty, <laughs> they're shitty uh, doings in their like inner city area. Yeah. How how uh, this leads to like some, I don't know. Okay, let's just do the plot. Yeah, it, let's well, just do the just, fucking plot. Just just before the plot, I I just for I just uh, throw out a trigger warning for uh, Nazi shit. We're not gonna obviously slay any of the slurs. Well. Uh, obviously obviously i'm just I'm, I'm just covering our bases all right okay that's okay. very fair i understand so uh the movie opens well so, okay so the movie's divided into like what's happening in real time and flashbacks so in the movie it opens with the flashback where uh the main character is it what decker decker what's his name what's uh his, the main character yeah uh I, I got it open. Like, Danny? Right Wait, here. Danny's, Danny. the, Danny's the kid. Danny's the kid. Derek um, is his brother. Derek. So his so the, the movie starts with uh, Derek killing two people, two black people who are trying to steal his car, um, but uh, while yelling slurs at them uh, and uh, gets, and then goes to jail. Uh, so then... In if, like fast forward to the future, uh, Danny's in high school, and uh, th- he had to write a paper on a uh, uh, what was it exactly like, like a civil rights icon, and so he wrote a paper about Mein Kampf and how Hitler was a civil rights icon. Uh, yeah. The teacher gets upset. Well, not not upset. But the teacher's like, "Hey, uh, maybe don't." Y- hey you're hey, being asshole. a jackass yeah like exactly. so so you're not going to take history you're going to take a one-on-one history with me and we'll right. call it american history x and we're gonna dig into your your nazi beliefs basically so at the same time uh danny's brother derek is coming home from prison uh when derek gets home he immediately is like hey like everyone just fuck off with nazi shit like just 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 kind of leave me alone um, and then it, I, I can't remember the exact events. Uh, I think like Danny, like is, is obviously pretty bigoted towards the black students at his school. 
Uh, um, yes. The, and one of them is in a gang, and pretty early on it establishes that they're kind of going after Danny because he's a Nazi prick. Yeah, and uh, he deserves it because he's a Nazi prick. He, he's, a, he's, a, he's a literal skinhead. Worth um, mentioning, yes. But uh, over the course, like... Derek is trying to get everyone to chill the fuck out with Nazi shit. Yes. Um, and ends up going to a like a, a concert um, where he goes to the, the Nazi leader. And this dude is actually like based on a real life guy who lived up in Washington. Uh, it's it's really crazy. The, like, like, I can't remember the guy's name, but like his story and how he basically did this. And that's why there's like such a big neo-Nazi problem in, in Washington. Um, but anyway, so he, uh, he goes to this guy and he's like, I'm not, I'm not a neo-Nazi anymore. Like you need to leave me the fuck alone. Uh, and you need to stay away from my brother. And this guy's like, ah, jokes on you. We already got your brother. So Derek beats the shit out of the, 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 the Nazi, Nazi grandfather. Nazi grandfather. Uh, and then everyone finds out, calls him the N word a bunch. And he has to steal a gun at, to escape the Nazi punk show. Yeah. Uh, and then we, he, pulls his brother aside and he sits him down to explain why he's not a neo-nazi anymore and then it's it reveals that while he's in prison he joined up with the uh the nazi gang in prison for safety uh but his like work detail was folding sheets and it was just him and this like black dude and he starts a friendship with this black dude who uh and then like the neo-nazis find this out and they uh brutally rape him in the shower Yes. Uh, then uh, he like leaves the neo-Nazi gang in prison uh, and is expecting to get killed by either the neo-Nazis or the uh, uh, African-American gang or group, I, prison, whatever prison dynamic that is. Uh, but then he finds out that his friend has been like protecting him uh, kind of from everybody. So yeah. But he also like like there's this really great moment where he's like because he he's in there for three years for like cold bloodedly murdering two people basically, uh, and this guy his friend is in there for six years because he dropped a TV on a cop while he was being arrested. Mm-hmm. So like and and he's like he's like no way you had to do more and the guy's like no I literally. Stole a TV, a cop yeah. like attacked me. I dropped it on them, and now I'm in here for six years. Yeah, and and so and also kind of interluded in this are all these moments in Derek's past where he's just a horrific Nazi piece of shit. So there's yeah. like one where they like trash a uh, grocery store uh, and uh, racially profile and attack a bunch of uh, Hispanic people. Uh, yeah. There's like another one where he is going on like racist Nazi rants at dinner. His sister wants to leave and he uh, uh, grabs her and starts choking her with, with roast beef uh, before then attacking like every other member of his family. Yes. Uh, nice and healthy. Anyways. So, yeah. So then, so he, so he survives prison because uh, he made friends with this black dude who ended up saving him. He like left the Aryan Brotherhood, uh, and then that catches us up to the current events. So after he tells Danny all this, Danny is like, "Hmm, maybe I shouldn't be a Nazi." <laughs> so then they like go home, and there's this like scene where they're like tearing down all the Nazi shit in their bedroom, um, and and shit. Um, and so, but then, uh, well, also part of the part of the part of the reason that the uh the main character got or Derek got denazified is the same high school teacher who's teaching Danny about history like came to prison and was helping Derek uh be de-radicalized mm-hmm. under the condition that Derek would then when he got out help de-radicalize others because he helped start the movement um yeah so then uh there there's the scene where they're Derek takes Danny to school. Danny's in school. Danny now has been has got so now Danny's on the path of de-radicalization. He's written a paper about it, um, and uh, like before he can turn the paper in, 
the uh, the black kid in the gang shoots him to death. Uh, uh, yes. And <laughs> the movie ends with Derek cradling Danny's body, uh, having to face that he is largely responsible for this because yes. he helped Nazify his little brother. Um, yeah. And that's the movie. <laughs> but, um, but, but, um, but. Yep, uh, I feel like I, I make that joke every time we talk about something that sucks. But um, I, I, listen, what? This movie tit. This movie made me cry. I was you, sad. You were sad. I Aww. was sad. Aww. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's um, terrible. Yeah. Well. So. Okay. And now, real quick, uh, we're gonna talk about the director's cut. What yeah. the director wanted is after this moment of of like gravity where Derek has realized like fully and truly beyond going to prison, beyond like like all all the de-radicalization that happened in prison has had to face the consequences of his actions by cradling his brother's dead body in the in the in the non-existent director's cut which sucks. He then she, he he goes skinhead again and gleefully grabs a gun. Um, and that is the most dog shit and alternate ending to a film I have ever heard of, and it actually <laughs> beats out what I used to consider was the most dog shit ending to any piece of media, and that's the alternate ending to story beats, which barely doesn't make the cut because I haven't even experienced that. It's okay. So real quick, just to summarize how bad that one is. Okay, go. Uh, the uh, spoiler alert for Angel Beats, uh, uh, like a twenty-year-old anime. Uh, the in the normal ending, uh, the main character finds peace, accepts reincarnation, uh, and then meets up with the girl he fell in love with in the next life after they both get reincarnated. Um, okay. In the alternate version, he. Uh, doesn't want to risk it so he stays in uh purgatory uh waiting for her to have a fucked up enough life to get sent to their purgatory again jesus oh no uh, anyway uh so and here's the reason i hate that hate hate this ending so much more besides like the obvious yeah where and and, and part of the reason and we're going to talk about the problematic aspects of this movie and we're not trying to sugarcoat it and sugarcoat the problematic aspects. Um, yeah. This is a pretty meaty, complicated movie. And we're not trying to say it's like perfect or represents everything it's trying to well. Yeah. But I I really love stories about the cycle of violence. Um, yeah. And I think, and this is a movie w- about the cycle of violence. Have you ever how... seen a, a movie called Blue Ruin? Are you familiar with Blue Ruin? No, I am not. In my opinion, the best movie about the cycle of violence, if anything. I, uh, <laughs> I, there's an anime called Kill a Kill. That's also oh, pretty. No. no, 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 not, not Kill a Kill. <laughs> a Kame got Kill. Not Kill okay, a Kill. Okay, okay, okay. A got, a Kame got Kill is also a pretty good, like, cycle of violence show. Uh, but anyway, but so, like, and, and I think what's all, what I always like, what I, like, what I always love is the moment where someone, D- decides to break the cycle of violence after they've been wronged because I think that's an important part of like both in the macro and the and the micro, yeah. Uh, in in just human experience, um, like it's like an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth stops when like when when someone is like, all right, I'm not gonna retaliate. Yeah, and exactly. I th- and I, I think that's just like always like even in like real life scenarios and in fiction. It's just always such a beautiful moment for me. Right. Um, is 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 the moment of, of I deserve this. I'm done. And yeah, and, and, I, and, and the done. ending quote of the movie is is like reading from Danny's paper, where he's like, "Hatred is a burden, and at some point you have to decide to put it down." Yeah. Exactly. And it's like it's just. You know, it's, I don't know. It's 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 like that part of the film, like just really fucking hit me, and I I really I really appreciated it. Yeah, no, I get you. I mean, yeah, I I feel strongly about about agreeing. I actually think that there's a lot about American History X that's pretty fantastic. 
I don't know if you agree with me on that. Just in general. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well... The the thing the thing I guess okay all right <laughs> let's just dive into this because like if we don't yeah. start if we don't start somewhere then we won't yeah so the the racism <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's just yep uh, all right so so here's the deal the movie rides a dark scary line uh, and that dark scary line is portraying a Nazi as the main character and then implying that he becomes a better person. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, it's not to say that a, uh, someone who's a Nazi can't become a better person. I do believe that there are people that are radicalized into their beliefs. They believe it for a certain amount of time. Then they feel massive regret. They pay for it dearly. It's, you know, their, their loved ones pay for it. And then afterward, you know, everything uh, looks real shit for them. So it's, I understand that someone who's a Nazi has pretty much given their life to being a Nazi. Even after they've decided they're no longer a Nazi, that life will still contain, continue. Um, I understand this. However, uh, the, the, the problem with depiction of this kind, in my opinion, is that it leans very heavily on Derek. Like, it leads on... on believing that Derek is generally smart and good. This is an assumption of the movie, and it's an assumption the movie makes from fucking right at the beginning, is that Derek, the Nazi, is actually very, very intelligent. I don't think this is all that true. I think he's just as pig-headed and stupid as every other Nazi. They just portray him differently. There, matter of fact, they even have a Nazi character in there that's kind of like a dunk Nazi. They all get to make fun of that Nazi because yeah. he sucks. He's lame. He's the lame Nazi. Uh, he's like, you know, overweight and he's sweaty and he's a fucking Nazi, you know, and he's and he won't even eat the black M and M's. Like yeah. he's such a racist <laughs> prick. But then. I mean, we're comparing that with Derek, and we're talking about Derek's intelligence. You know, all the black people in the movie work for uh, some level of... Uh, they have, like, some level of social standing, right? So it's not... I understand that the, the main black character in the movie is, you know, portrayed to be, like, a, a prisoner. But either way... It portrays black people very largely as authority figures and white people as people fighting against those authority figures, hmm. um, which makes it very, very queasy and, and sickly in my tummy tum. So, for instance, they go play basketball <laughs> oh, and, yeah. and the black people run the basketball uh, like what is that called? Court? A court? Yeah. Yes, the basketball court. They like run the basketball court, right? Um, I was shel I'm an indoor kid. I was sheltered. I um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, th the black people basically are meant to be implied to be running the the basketball court, and then these Nazis come in and try to take it from them by beating them at their own game, mm -hmm. and then they succeed. And, um, you know, it's it's kind of this moment where it's like what they're implying is that white people feel marginalized in a society of black people. They feel like black people are out there intentionally coming after white people and then white people become Nazis as a response to this. Right. Well, although which is I, largely I, what the movie argues. Anyway, continue. I, I, well, I, 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 I will say I. I like I, I definitely like agree with with where you're coming from, but I also think that there's an element of, I at least the way I interpreted those general overtones is is the the black and white sequences, the memory sequences are are like from Derek's perspective in that moment, you know. So like during the basketball scene, and and during these other things, I think that it's it's showing it's 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 exhibiting those emotions to kind of like reflect his state of mind in that moment 
were because they were playing that like really like triumphant Nazi music during that basketball scene. Uh, yeah. And I and I you know was, and so that's just kind of how I interpreted it. Um, but and there's I think there's also but it, so you know, you're also talking about how they're portraying him as intelligent. And, and, you know, talking about how if he was that smart, he probably wouldn't have been, like, a knuckle-dragging Nazi. But I also yeah. think there's that there's that scene in the mo- at the end of the movie where where his younger brother, who's, like, looking at it from the outside, is like, I don't think Derek radicalized himself that much. I think, like, their dad radicalized Derek to be a Nazi. And Derek just never confronted those police until he was in prison. Yeah. So I think yeah. like you you could be really smart and you could be intelligent and just But why did like, he immediately the second they threw a microphone in his face he's like it's black people black people did it. You know, it's we, like it's like where'd you what you're so smart, dude? Why didn't you think this through before you said it on TV? I, well, because like I think his his I don't know. I I I think so like his dad was complaining about about like pretty dog whistly shit. And I don't this might be a me experience, but when I was young and a child, whenever my father would express an opinion, I would take it and then go further with it because I wanted to be like my dad. Um, but yeah, yeah. So that, I don't know. That's just how I interpreted that. Is it was just a dude who never turned his intellect inward and only used it to like build the blinders around his eyes. If that makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I mean it's it's just funny how the whole time the movie is kind of doing this whole like Derek's a good dude, he's just a Nazi, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh and and it's like it's like he has a swastika tattoo on his chest. Right. Like, that's a there's, that's a decision you made. You yeah, know what I mean? But there's I don't know. I, I also like the scene where he gets out of the shower and he like covers it up and he's like Oh yeah. I wish I didn't have this. <laughs> See, um, there there are so many things I like about the movie because, like, the arc is so clearly felt, and it's a movie about de-radicalizing and shit. But I yeah. think that, like, I think that the movie... Well, okay, the biggest problem with the movie is Tony K. <laughs> <laughs> because Tony K's mentality on what the movie was versus, like, what the movie A probably should have been and B actually was like Edward Norton was clearly a lot more in touch with that. I think his performance is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think that Edward Furlong is also really good. Um, I think that things start to kind of warp a little bit and turn into, turn into poopus when it's like, it's the portrayal. It's the way that they decided to handle it. And they decided to handle it like, He's a white guy. He's a little angry. He does some crazy shit. Uh, but he's going to learn that he was wrong and change. And then he'll pay for his mistakes. But, like, that's the thing. Is like It's a good movie in the sense that it demonstrates that if you're a fucking Nazi and you're going around being a piece of shit and then somebody kills not you but your little brother, you know, like, you you deserved that shit. But at the same time, like, it never really gets into the whole, like, a lot of times black people form gangs because racist Nazis fucking come into their neighborhoods and kill them. Right. And which is funny because the opening of the movie is about a gang of black people breaking into white suburbia and fucking with a Nazi, the wrong guy, and then he curb stomps them. Well, also, like, that curb stomp is portrayed very, very brutally. Uh, I think everybody knows exactly what I'm talking about, because if you've ever seen it, it's fucking a nightmare. But yeah, but regardless of all of that, like, regardless of whatever, like, it is about a, a it's he was just fucking his girlfriend in the middle of the night when some black guys came around and he had to kill them. You know mm. what I mean? And and that kind of like he didn't have to kill them, but he heavily like the movie heavily implies that this is just like in his mind the right decision to make. Right. You know, and and it's not necessarily saying like 
I don't know. It's not outwardly being like what a horrific thing he 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 has done. I I feel like the movie like it, it it's simultaneously trying to dunk on Nazi culture while also trying to tell a serious story about the cycle of racist violence. Mm -hmm. And so by doing so, it kind of does this hierarchical thing where it's like, this Nazi is better than these other Nazis. There is levels to it where someone can have big giant swastika tattoos, but then they smile because a black guy made a joke and then all of a sudden they're good. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I also, like, I don't know. I... I, I I have to be a little optimistic because it breaks my little heart to to, to like not or, or, or to, to like not think that that people can like be redeemed and I, maybe not redeemed but like de-radicalized if that makes sense. Yeah, well, and like you know, generally I like movies like like this, but the fucked up thing is this movie I feel like coincides in a weird way with Fight Club where. I have deeply experienced people who have been like, yeah, American History X is all fucked up and crazy. Uh, the ending's so fucked up. But also that part where he's like, immigrants are like this, you know, and, and everybody goes, yeah. And it's like, whoa, really? <laughs> I it, It's definitely one of those where if, if you agree with any statement when the movie is in black and white, uh... I don't want to talk to you. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. In general, you could just leave. Well, and, you and know? let me tell you this: thank God that parts of the movie are in black and white, also, so that I don't have to constantly be jutting back and forth between shitty past, shitty present, and how they're not really as starkly different as they make it out to look. But they sure try with the with the <laughs> color correction. Um. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't want to shit on this movie all day long because I do genuinely think that its heart's in the right place. And I actually, it just comes across as a movie that's anti-racist, th- that's made by white people. You know what I mean? It's a movie about fucking Nazis being shitty, made by white people. So it's like the empathy mostly is going to go towards the white people's direction. And while they can experience the injustices that are that are laid upon black people, the movie does in absolutely no way cover any of the bases on how badly minorities are treated in the United States and how absolutely despicable and diabolical it is to be a Nazi knowing how fucking bad it is. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Anyway continue i get oh wait is it do we need to do an ad advertisement we do if you think nazis are bad you should check out the sponsors of this show uh <laughs> uh we like to thank uh hashtag machine productions like we said before they have a short coming out as part of the nick's Hort collective on shutter it is called nine they have not done nine of them uh there is but one that is named nine uh like the number uh go check it out on shutter but uh we're not sponsored by shutter so just 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 that one uh take that as you will uh we'd also like to thank ambi dream studio get rid of that landlord special on your wall by covering it with psychedelic art like listen i've lived in 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 white rooms and I've lived in rooms like I am in now. And let me tell you, uh, covering your walls with shit makes you just feel better in your room. Hot take. So go fix that at Ambient Dream Studio. Uh, we have yes. some a Patreon, patreon.com slash excrement, if you want to make me feel better and may yeah. feel better by giving us money. Yeah, uh, I mean, support the the podcast. Let your people let the people know that you're a proud supporter of the podcast. And also, every time we tweet some shit, y'all need to be retweeting that shit. Let those people know. You know what I mean? Um, we're still in the process of kind of growing, even though we've but, done quite a few episodes at this point. But something I heard once was that podcasts don't usually like get to a place where there's like a shitload of regular listeners until they're at about a hundred episodes. But we're fucking speed running. We're doing just fine. Like we're there's schmoving. a lot of people 
we're we're smoothing. Like a lot of people will be listening to us. Um, I, uh, and we deeply want to thank those people as well. Yes. yes. And the world needs to hear about <laughs> Timothy Chalamet fucking a peach. Oh, 100%. Absolutely. And who's going to do it? Who's going to tell him? It's going to uh, be me. We are. That's it's right. Us. Uh, all right. Uh, so what are we going to talk about on the second part? The, the, the post-ad period of the podcast about this movie. Well, so I think... One of the big debates, one, I mean, uh, obviously we are, we went ahead and did the one, which is like, on a representational basis, does this movie accidentally do a racism while trying to not do a racism? And I think that it does a stupid, not necessarily a racism. I, I think that it like, it doesn't ignorant. It doesn't actually know what the correct answer in certain uh, angles probably would be to do. And like, yeah. while while maybe Tony K was like really, really, really like woke as fuck, and he was like, "No, I I know what I want to fucking say in this film, uh, and I'm gonna get it, goddamn it." I also know that over that ending scene where that stupid bullshit happens that you were complaining about moments ago with that shitty ending bit, yeah. Instead of him crying over the loss of his brother and being like. Wow, I can't believe my ideology that I fostered led to the death of my family. Fuck. Like, instead of that being the thing, it's that other, like, stupid, let's continue the cycle of violence bullshit. Okay, so the thing to mention there is that Tony K, uh, in the editing bay, when they showed him that ending, he punched a wall until his fist bled. That's how huh. frustrated he was at the ending of the movie that you can see right now. Because he's like, no, it's about him picking up a gun and going ape shit. And it's like, no, it's about him no, reinforcing his Nazi ideals. Yeah. Well, and it's it's just like, I mean, okay, is that true? That, that you know, people have a tendency to not really be aware of their own uh tragedy and i would blame i would say tragedy is usually somebody thinking that they're doing the right thing realizing that the whole time they've been doing the wrong thing and then paying the consequences of that for the remainder of their life right in my brain that is a tragedy but him picking up a gun and going ape shit is like imagine if that's how the ending of romeo and juliet went you know what i mean (laughs) like oh holy shit juliet's dead i'm gonna fucking take my sword and kill everyone in town like i don't know it's it's also that it is antithetical (laughs) to both uh derek's story of 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 learning about the cycle of violence and how to break the cycle of violence and also the danny's last words i don't like i don't know i feel like uh i feel like tony k just wanted uh american history x to american history y uh, it's called african history y african history y where it's i don't want to watch that movie by the way i just, want you to know uh uh norton and like west africa <laughs> just murdering people <laughs> But now he has like like the Manson tattoo, but it's, it's anyway. Oh my uh, god, it's way well, too far. Okay, but, can we like, talk about the college paper or the high school paper bit? Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, so the, he's like, which which one? The Mein Kampf one or the the one where he quotes Abraham Lincoln? Well, so he wrote. <laughs> <laughs> so he writes he writes the Mein Kampf one, uh, and then. Um, you know, everybody does this whole, well, he's a good kid. You know, he would never actually do that. Uh, and then, like, throughout the movie, there's so many Nazis that are, like, pressuring him and saying bad things about immigrants. But, like, the weird fucked up thing is he does genuinely fear and hate people that aren't white. So yeah. why not just let him <laughs> honestly believe the shit? So instead, they're just like, no, he doesn't actually believe it. He's just uh, being brainwashed by all these people around him. And the the the, uh, the teacher is like, "Yo, let's let's have you actually write about something for real, you know." And I understand that the um, the movie is somewhat meant to be kind of like representative of 
the paper itself that he's writing and kind of the flashbacks are talking about his like memories and shit that's happened to his family and shit that's kind of molded him into the context that he's found himself in. But like, what the fuck is the, like, why, why are they? Okay. If you lay this out in a linear narrative fashion, Danny's story is a little fucking weird. Cause like he, Wrote the Mein Kampf paper, uh, got uh, criticized for it, got given a new assignment, said the new assignment was bullshit, had a bad interaction with a gang member, uh, had a good interaction with his brother where he cleared all the bullshit out of his life. But then, like, you know, it isn't all that much longer uh, after all the things have happened where it's like, and now... Uh, he's like quoting Abraham Lincoln. You know what I mean? So then he's he goes he goes back to the bathroom and is shot by the gang member that he pissed off last time. So what that's trying to I think it's trying to speed run an arc. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, that's a lot of shit going on in his life that like they kind of blew through. The movie tries to cover a lot of things really, really, really quickly and really, really firmly. Um, but in doing so, I feel like kind of, um, it looks at things a bit short sighted, if that makes any sense. Uh huh. I, yeah, I, but I, I definitely think they could have smoothed that out a little bit. <laughs> um, I, yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think that is fair. I I kind of forgot that the movie took place over a span of twenty four hours. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, the, the, ah, that part of it is kind of bullshit, huh? I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> I don't want to say that the movie's bad. <laughs> I I I've made this joke like too many times at this point, but I'm gonna like, I'm gonna deflect from us re- falling back into that. Uh, okay, by yes. by quoting Wikipedia, uh, this is okay. on Tony K. Um, Wikipedia is known for its factual accuracy. Continue. Okay, let me let me see where I'm they're with where you. they're <laughs> quoting this. Uh, I'm fucking with you. You can quote it. So this is, uh, let me, okay. Let me uh, cha 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 cha. Who 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 wrote this? Uh. Uh, you don't have an author. Wait. No, I think it is. I think Tony K wrote this, and so they're quoting something. No, okay, yes. So this is this is Tony K side of the story, um, uh, or 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 they're using Tony K side of the story to write this blurb in Wikipedia. Uh, the American History X was critically lauded, and Norton was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Actor for his performance in the film. The battle over artistic control of the film. Uh, which which has become uh, part of Hollywood folklore, all but destroyed uh, Kay's legacy. He delivered his original cut on time and within budget, but when the producer insisted on changes, arguments began. The debate quickly escalated. Uh, Kay spent $100,000 of his own money to take out 35 full-page ads in the Hollywood trade press denouncing Norton and the producer, using quotations from a variety of people, uh, from John Lennon to Abraham Lincoln, he attended a meeting at New Line uh, to which he brought a Catholic priest, a Jewish rabbi, and a Tibetan monk. When the company offered him an additional eight weeks to recut the film, he said he discovered a new version that needed a year to remake and flew to the Caribbean to have the script rewritten by uh, Derek Walcott. Finally, when the Directors Guild refused to let him remove his name from the New Line version of the film, he demanded it be credited to Humpty Dumpty instead and filed a 200 200- a uh, million dollar lawsuit when the company refused. All right. Well, that sounds great to do. I, uh, My God. All right. Well, absolutely something you do when you're in the right. Yeah. I, I say sarcastically. Christ. Yeah. I, I don't know about that one, my man. <laughs> like, I, I feel know, like Tony, his side of the story makes him sound like an unhinged asshole. 
So I can only well, I mean, imagine. He did punch a wall when he found out that the end of the movie was about a guy having to take consequences instead of getting angry and fighting back. No, a white man can't have consequences for his racism. Isn't that fucking weird, though? Because, like, that's what the movie's about. Yeah. Like, that's I feel like <clears throat> in so many ways. That's what the movie has been about the whole time. The whole, all of it. Yeah. Like, and and I feel like that's something that Edward Norton knew. It was less like he was trying to, like, fuck the movie or change the movie or make the movie into something else, but more he was just kind of, like, being like, hey, why don't we just do the movie we're already making Yeah. instead of turn it into this, like, hyper-violent bullshit um, that doesn't actually... Well, and, like, Tony K also had really big problems with showing any scenes of Derek being abusive for l- too long. Like, he had a really big problem with them leaving the entirety of that dinner scene in. Because in Tony K's mind, they were just going to flash back to it a couple of times and be like, there was that one time where Derek kind of got angry at his own sister, you know, or something like that. Um, right. But But instead, in the movie... You see the whole fucking scene, it sucks, and by the end of it, you fucking hate Derek. So when it goes back to Derek, you know, there is going to be a little part of you that's like, man, you know, I understand that everything is going against this guy. I understand that I'm supposed to hate him, like, deeply. I understand that he is a bad dude and he is a Nazi, but they keep giving me more and more fantastic reasons to fucking hate him. Right. And, like, that in my brain is, like, the entire essential nature of his arc, right? Is you've got to have it so that literally everything in his life is stacked up against him based on this one stupid ideological decision that he made over some grief. But, see, the other thing is, like, you know, this is this kind of gets back to the Derek's so smart thing to me. It's like everybody always talking about how Derek's so smart, but you know, here he is mid let's call it mid thirties and he's only just now really interrogating his his fascism. Uh so there's that, uh, and his racism. But like there's also the element of like, you know, he jumped immediately to the most racist conclusion ever <laughs> on impulse. Right. Like like the firefighter dad dies and he's like Clearly, this is, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and so it's like, it's like I'm, I'm a, quite a bit aware of radicalization. I understand that 98 is when this came out, which is a, a long time ago, comparatively, and the internet wasn't quite nearly what it is. Um, yeah. I want, I, I want to say, that doesn't, I think we had a bit less of a neo-Nazi problem then. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it wasn't as in the open. Ignore me. I'm, I don't think. I'm sorry. Well, I think a lot of people started showing it off with with Obama being president. Um, see, because like the the path is like nine eleven, then I- Islamophobia, uh, people falling into their Christianness, and their Christianness mostly being white, and that basically uh, segregating them into these like pristinely white Republican spaces where then we elect a black guy. They all get scared and hateful. Then they uh, like generate their hate so much that it, it ends up being a Trump problem. Right. Uh, And then they're out in the open about it and they're proud of it. But in the nineties, like it's not to say that they weren't there, but people kind of were of the opinion that if you were a fucking neo-Nazi in the United States, people were like, Whoa, uh fuck you like we fuck we fucked up and killed the nazis because they were pricks like and so in a lot of ways like you know this movie i feel like took the the racism of nazis in the 90s and took it out of the context of it being a thing where Nazis were racist against Jewish people in specific and was like white American neo-Nazis are really against black people. And it was like, actually, I feel like if there's one thing that's good about it, right, it's that it's trying to talk about like that relationship of how like neo-Nazism is actually 
primarily racist against black people while you know prior forms of nazism were a bit more violently racist against different groups but american nazism is very specifically against black people like uh, every what every minority gets it from a from a nazi you know like no one is safe from that shit but like if we're talking about a primary like yeah b- like black people got it the worst right so like i think that <laughs> i think that if this movie were accurately portraying itself then Derek would have been already kind of prior radicalized by his father before his father died. You know what I mean? It'd be some kind of something like that. Some passed down belief, some bullshit, because I don't generally think people just like come to Nazi conclusions organically. Does that make sense? Yeah. <clears throat> the implication is that after his father died in that, uh, in that accident or, well, it was a violent thing like somebody shot him shot him while they were responding to a fire right well so whichever whatever the fucking thing is the point is like you know most firefighters that i've known in my life are very right wing Uh, i don't know if that's necessarily true for you but that's certainly true for me you know so i think by probability alone we're, we're talking about a family where racism was probably already there Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when this happened, it like aggravated those beliefs, right? It made them flesh. That makes a lot more sense to me than him just organically going, yeah, and fucking they killed him, so I guess I'm racist now. I don't know. That's fucked up. But whatever. I guess here I go. I'm going into racist town. Like, so I don't know. I feel like the movie is short-sighted. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I, I definitely feel like it, it, it does its best. It tries. It's a 90s movie. It's a fucking 90s movie. I mean... But in a weird way, I feel like if somebody tried to make this movie now, it would be so fucking annoying to me. It would... Uh, it, I, I can't imagine someone making this movie and it not sucking. Uh, yeah. Well, and also, it's like... I don't know. It's just like the pitch of the movie just like the pitch of the movie sounds so hard to sell where it's like yeah we're gonna take a a, a violent in, a like neo-nazi who is incarcerated incarcerated for murdering two people uh and and redeem him like you know it's like if if someone gives you that pitch for a movie it's like hmm uh, why don't i, I don't pass know if we on should that do one? that yeah i think we pass on that one i don't know well and like I don't know. I think that's almost the thing, right? Is like it's a whole movie geared around the idea of redeeming a Nazi. And the way that they choose to redeem him is when he's in prison on on a simultaneous level, he is raped by fake Nazis supposedly. All right, cuz they imply that they're not all that much about their beliefs. They just like are tough idiots and they protect each other, but he's smart. I think, because he's a Nazi or some bullshit. I don't know I, I how they imply that, but it's kind of gross. I think some of huh? them are believers and others are not. Yeah. And he was uh, trying but to... either way... Yeah, anyway. Yeah, so either way, like, the the movie does a, does a simultaneous... He gets raped in the shower by them, and then he makes a, his first black friend. And it's like... Ah, boy. <laughs> like, <laughs> ah, boy. Like, y'all couldn't have thought of anything. I understand it's powerful. I also understand that it's true. But does that necessarily need, mean that it's, like, the correct artistic decision to make to make the most sound, like, you know, uh, the, the, the thematic choices? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yes, logically it follows, but, like, my God, it's almost exploitative. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 All right. I don't know. Well, where where does that where does that put us? Where does that put us? Uh, shit, mid or gold. I'm going to be very honest here, and I'm gonna put it in mid, because I feel like while it is a 
fairly powerful film. I think that a lot of people have seen it and cried to it. Lord knows I have done that. Um, I, I investigate the cry. Why do we cry? Why do I care? Why do I give a shit about these fucking Nazis? And the, the truth is that, like, you know, at no point does the movie encourage me to cry about the, you know, the Mexican people that they go into their fucking grocery store and ruin their career and, and give them trauma and hurt them. You know, at no point does the movie suggest that I cry for them. Uh, the movie is wanting me to cry for the sad, poor Nazi who has to take consequences for his fucking actions. So more than anything, I like a movie that's like consequences. But also, I think that the movie uses minorities as a prop uh, to talk about racism. And that in and of itself is almost uh, its own brand of failure. So while I think that the movie is successful in many regards, I think that it it's its core short-sighted ignorance makes it somewhat of a failure. So I'm going to go with mid. You? Uh well I don't know. I'm I'm after after your your analysis, I am my well, my there's opinions. nothing wrong with saying that you had an you had a profound experience. Like it's I, okay. I don't want to say you it. saw it for the first time, right? I, this was your first time ever seeing it. Yeah, and I watched. Okay, this it, is my like uh, three hours ago. So this is my like fourth time watching it. Like my yeah, fourth. so I, I've seen it a few fucking times. I definitely, I'm not. I definitely agree with with why and the parts of the film that are problematic. I yeah. I just I think. I'm gonna fall back to my diff- uh, how how I interpreted scenes differently, uh, as as we yeah. talked about earlier, and so I'm not. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Are you gonna go with gold? I'm gonna go with gold, but with the giant Ooh. with the giant fucking caveat of of like those are my interpretations of the scenes, and I'm not saying that they're the correct interpretation. Right. It's but my, with those interpretations, those are meaningful to you. Yes. Uh, well, and yeah, also it's just like, that. like, you know, I, I just really like, I don't know. I, I feel like I was once on the path to not being a Nazi, but being a right wing shit heel. Well, it's because that's the belief system that everybody inundates you with until you can get out of that belief system and see the world for how it actually fucking is. Yeah. And I, I, I like, I knew, I actually, I knew a dude who was like like he had some bad takes and but he was like yeah i was like the only white kid at my school and i got bullied for it and, you know and i'm not like yeah. it's like you know i i i'm sure that's going to leave you with some bad takes um but right. you know part of being an adult and part of part of being rational is is like objectively looking at looking at the reality and and how like how that affects you in the micro and the macrocosm and i think that um despite the film's issues and short failings uh i i do just in my heart want to believe that like people can be de-radicalized and like used as tools against uh radicalization yeah um well and also i like no i i get you i this movie's pretty similar to a crack cracked article i read uh, mm-hmm. where a guy was talking about how he was like a neo-Nazi, like I think I don't think he killed anyone, but I think he like really fucked someone up in a fight, uh, like a person of color, and then he went to jail. Yeah, got out, and the only person who would hire him was a Jew, <laughs> and how this his boss that de-radicalized him, <laughs> uh, because by just like treating him like a human being. So no, I, yeah. I, I was I was kind of coming to this movie thinking about that cracked article because I really like it. Uh. But you know, so so two things I want to add here before we leave. The movie also acts like if you want to get a neo Nazi to stop being a neo Nazi, we, as a minority of some kind, have to reach out to the Nazis and be like, "Hey, it, you don't have to." Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and that kind of blows. Yeah, yeah, that but, does blow. It's it's definitely but, it's 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 everybody's personal responsibility to exactly it's to, very very that like improve themselves and de-radicalize themselves when needed. 
Uh, Very true. It's not. But it's to... not up to women or minorities to to fix fix uh, a, a Nazis' problems. <laughs> right. Well, and so to to make one a- added little addendum. I, we never talked about the fact that this is a Sigma male movie because we were talking about other things, but the season, you know, we're doing here is about Sigma male movies. I feel, I feel like this movie is the Sigma male anti-racist movie, which is to say it's, it's the white guy movie that, that all the white guys like, and they all walk around and go, yeah, fucking Nazis. But at the same time, they're all at the same time going, yeah, but look how tough they are. Fucking cool white guys. And I understand white guys. I'm a white guy. You know what I mean? So the the thing is, like, I've seen so many fucking, like, Sigma kind of dudes, like, have this poster, you know, up in their room or wherever and be like, yeah, I'm all about American history X. I was you know about I mean? to like, say, this is a call out post to uh, insert redacted name here. Yes, it, truly. Um, but either way, like fucking come on. Anyway, funny stuff. Uh, but I, there's not really much to add there. It's just like, oh boys, like, like there are other movies. Like I highly recommend that if you're going to watch a movie about uh, anti-racism, instead of watching this, you should watch Spike Lee's uh, movie that rhymes with this, Malcolm X. Uh, instead of American History X, watch Malcolm X, a much better movie about anti-racism uh, and about how that has affected the country. Uh, much better film. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I'm not going to say that this movie isn't like valuable or good. You know, I've seen it many times, and I do think my watches have been worthwhile. But I, I do firmly believe that if you really want to party with some good shit you gotta check out like a spike lee movie maybe like that would probably do it like if you want to get rid of like if you want to fix the whole the way you think about race might i recommend watching movies made by um i don't know black people (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's uh, <laughs> it's fine. We won't worry about it. Anyway, um, I've been May Leeds, uh, uh, I, as always. I've been Neo, uh, and we're going to, I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of my night. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna sit here and work on my new album woo-woo. and drink this PBR. I'm going to Google how late the liquor store within walkie distance is open. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. Oh, fuck. Holy crap. Fuck yeah. All right. Oh, fuck yeah. All right. (laughs) See you later. We'll see you in hell. Bye now.